Marriage is a sacred celebration of the love between two people, and June is one of the most popular months for them to get married. However, many weddings are deemed as void because of lack of requirements when applying for their marriage license and other problems. So before a couple walk down the aisle, what are the important requirements before getting married? What is the process of filing for these requirements? What steps can couples take to ensure that their marriage is valid? Good evening, I'm attorney Rod Nepomuceno and you're watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel. This show is about making the law work for you by giving legal advice on topics that matter to you. Now tonight we'll be discussing your legal rights on the issue of uh, marriage, uh, what you need to know about the basic but uh, pertinent requirements that are needed before the big day and what you need to do to acquire them. Now tonight we are joined by attorney Fina Tantuico, president of the UP Women Women's Lawyers Circle and a professional lecturer at the UP College of Law and the Lyceum of, of the Philippines College of Law. Good evening, Attorney Fina. Good evening. Ayan, I, I'm, 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 I'm glad that you were able to make it. A lot of our, our, our uh, production staff had a difficult time coming here. And of course, uh, we all know the traffic is, is, is terrible because of the rains. And in fact, my partner, Attorney Karen Jimeno, unfortunately, unfortunately couldn't make it. Uh, I hope, Karen, you're, you're fine. But of course, the show must go on and, uh, and we need to give some legal advice to our televiewers. And our topic for tonight is something that you're very, very much an expert on. Not really. <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but uh, it is an interesting topic because obviously, well, we all saw mm -hmm. the, 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 the wedding no, of uh, mm -hmm. the celebrities, Marika Reyes and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Richard Poon. And it's, it's, it seems to, to me that uh, June is a special month for, for marriage. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, a lot of people are, are, are asking, the, the first thing that they ask, of course, the basic thing is, mm -hmm. what, are, what are the basic requirements? I, of mm -hmm. course, we, if we have to go through the textbook requirements I for know. that, you'll pr probably be too boring. But just if you just want to summarize, through. just run through some of the, the basic things that they need to get through to get, uh, to get mm -hmm. married. Okay, there's, I, I lump it into um, yeah. um, several groups now. Mm -hmm. There's a gender requirement of course <laughs> which is interesting actually we'll, we'll touch right. on that later on um, okay. the parties have to be male mm -hmm. and female mm -hmm. there's an age requirement right um of course it's 18, 18 right? mm -hmm. which is the age of majority mm -hmm. but the law says that if you're between 18 and 21 mm -hmm. you still need to submit mm -hmm. a an affidavit of um the consent of your parents, parental right. consent. Mm -hmm. And if you are 22 to 25, mm -hmm. um, some proof of parental advice. Parental advice. Now okay. that has to be written as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have the gender, the age, of course, the uh, formal um, ceremony mm -hmm. with a uh, solemnizing officer who is mm -hmm. authorized to administer marriage. Right. And there is also the uh, procurement of a marriage license right mm -hmm. um, those are the um, those are the kind of the basic, yeah, kind right, of the basic yeah. requirements yeah so you did. split it between essential requirements which mm -hmm. is the the legal capacity meaning the 18 yes. and, and yes. above and then after that the uh, of course the um, the other age the, yeah the age no? the, a, a, and, and the and ceremony the, you know, and the ceremony itself where yeah both the parties will uh, profess mm -hmm. that they consent right. to be married before a person who is authorized to solemnize marriages. All right, that's perfect. Because uh, uh, a few weeks back, uh, maybe a few months back, we actually tackled the, the issue of annulment. But mm -hmm. now we're talking about the requirements of marriage, which is mm -hmm. a totally different thing. It's mm -hmm. kind of related because right. uh, because some of the essential requirements that you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. are, are are needed. Otherwise, if you don't meet them or it's uh, if mm -hmm. it's partially defective, then you, it's either void or or void the bond, right? mm -hmm. So, uh, like in the case of if you get married and you're below eighteen. Mm -hmm. and right. that's, definitely that, that's definitely void. That's definitely void. Ab initio. I mean, yes. from from the very beginning. Yes. So what you need there is just a declaration of nullity. Yes. Is that right? Yes. And, no, but if you've um, attained uh, the uh, age of majority already, mm -hmm. so um, 
you will have to at least um, go through now, as we that process. That's right. Now, as we mentioned earlier, as you said, at least in the, uh, in the Constitution, at least, uh, I know it's, mm -hmm. it's mentioned mm -hmm. that, uh, and also in the Family Code, I believe, mm -hmm. that it has to be male and female. Male and female. All right. Now, one of, uh, one of my guests in, uh, in another show uh, mm -hmm. was a transgender. Now, mm -hmm. have, we, have we tackled that issue? Uh, because obviously, mm -hmm. uh, especially with uh, the rights of, um, you know, um, of gay rights uh, mm -hmm. coming to right. fore, uh, and also um, uh, sex change, um, mm -hmm. hap that's, that's a reality now in, mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, ha have we tackled that as the Supreme Court or any court uh, tackled that issue mm -hmm. of whether uh, transgender can, can get married? Th to, that, that's to a very marriage. interesting topic. Yeah. Um, especially now because, as you said, there is mm -hmm. a proliferation mm -hmm. of, uh, well, in some jurisdictions, same-sex marriages are allowed. That's right. Okay. That's the other but thing. But here uh -huh. in the Philippines, it is not. It is not. Okay. Right. It's uh, categorically stated in our constitution. It has to be yeah. between a man and a woman. Um, there have been cases um, in the uh, U.S. courts mm -hmm. where they actually tackled the issue of um, sex change. Right. But interestingly enough, we have two Philippine Supreme Court cases mm -hmm. somehow um, touching on this issue. Right. We have the case of um, Silverio. If I'm not mistaken, I might, I might just uh, not have remembered the exact title of the case, but it's Silverio versus CA and Kagandahan, um, Republic versus Kagandahan. Mm -hmm. okay. Initially, in Silverio, there was a, um, well, it, the issue came to the fore because uh, this person um, filed a uh, petition to uh, rectify correction of entry in, right. the, civil in the civil <laughs> registry. His which gender. Is, with his yes, gender. Ah. with respect to his gender, saying okay. that he had already a sex, sex change. change. Mm -hmm. No, and that he went from male to female and that, mm -hmm. you know, he to allow, he, him, to to allow him to get married. And that was precisely the reason mm -hmm. for uh, the, uh, the uh, petition itself, because he wanted right. to get married. Mm -hmm. And um, the Supreme Court categorically stated that he cannot. All right. He cannot because... Um, he cannot change the, he the, can, the entry. He cannot change that entry. Yeah, okay. Because it's and, not a clerical um, error. It's not a clerical <laughs> error. Yeah. It was a statement yes. of a fact at yes. that time. At the time no? Yes. So. And um, he said, you, you compare, there was another case actually where um, the, uh, the person who wanted to, uh, Get no, uh, wanted his cha the change, change, change recognized. Yeah. Um, file a case in court. Right. But this was different mm. from this particular case because he was actually found to have or to be suffering from a medical condition. All right. Such Which, that when he, or was it a she, was born. Uh, it's kind of a mixture, a, a, a mixed gender. The description was he or she was female. All right. Because initially, Probably it was the, the female um, uh, I see. Yeah. Uh, genitalia organ, yeah. organ that was, um, it was seen. there. I see. But it turns out, and it's interesting. It's only now that I found out there is such a uh, medical condition whereby, uh, without any human intervention, um, certain hormones in the body um, develop. develop yeah. There are male, more male so, hormones mm -hmm. that develop, and you ev you actually. Mm -hmm. But that's more of, I male. think, uh, uh, yes. sorry to cut you off, but uh, that's more of an exception to the rule, right? Yes, really? it's an so, exception to the so, rule. But so, generally. But, but mm. in that particular case, the Supreme Court categorically said, yes, you may change. You, you may change uh, because gender. of that medical Because condition. there is no human intervention. All right, okay. So in that, re in the, yes. that regard, uh, I guess we can, we can make that exception that perhaps it's mm -hmm. possible that uh, it mm -hmm. may be male and male, but only in those Extreme, extreme medical conditions. Yes. All right, we'll extreme. answer a few questions, ma'am, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. We'll mm -hmm. answer a few questions from our viewers. Uh, uh, with the help, of course, of attorney Fina. Mm -hmm. Our first question is from Maribeth, and she mm -hmm. asks, I am engaged to an American and currently residing in LA. My mm -hmm. fiance and I would like to get married in the Philippines, especially since most of my family and relatives cannot go to the US. Mm -hmm. What process and requirements do we need in order to get a marriage 
permit, maybe a marriage license, but mm -hmm. that's what she means. I also want to ask if we get married there, will our marriage be valid under U.S. laws? So the first question is, mm -hmm. what are the, again, these are mm -hmm. kind of like well, uh, uh, a checklist of requirements. Right. No? Well, the most important um, documentary requirement for this type of a marriage, note that one party is an American citizen and the other is a, presumably a Filipina. Filipina yeah. um, one, the, the foreign um, party must obtain from the consulate here a certificate of legal capacity to marry. All right. Okay. Um, that, mm -hmm. is that is a requirement. It's mm -hmm. um, stated in the family code. And then they have to go through the usual yeah. um, process, which is that they should obtain a marriage license. But they, they will have to submit that. Um, certificate. Yeah, their, their marriage here will be valid in the U.S., right? It'll be, yes, yeah, of it'll course. Be considered just it, like any other just marriage. Just like any other marriage. Yeah. Yes. Of course, that, uh, that uh, presupposes that he, the American uh, fiancé is single because if, if he was a divorcee mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. if he was a widower, mm -hmm. he would rec we would require additional documents, right? Like, mm -hmm. like a certificate of death. Of course, death a proof, and, uh, yes. Or yeah, yeah. And, and, and certificate of divorce. Yes. Oh, oh, fine. Okay. Good. Now, our next question is from Nicola via Facebook, and it reads, I read that my fiancé and, and I have to attend uh, seminars, prenuptial, marriage counseling, family planning, etc. Is this really a requirement? Do we really need to attend these? Or is, the only, uh, is this only for church weddings? Is there a possibility to skip all these seminars? I think these seminars are required for you to secure a marriage license. That a right? marriage license, yes. And these seminars are required... Um, for those who need parent, mm -hmm. either parental consent or parental advice. I see. Okay. okay so right. if, if you fall mm -hmm. within that category, mm -hmm. meaning that you, need, you still need parental consent and that's, yeah. that, that has to do with age, mm -hmm. then you will have to attend all these exactly. seminars. Otherwise, mm -hmm. um, if you do not and you are not able to present a certificate attesting to your attendance, then this may delay the um, processing of your marriage license. Uh, marriage license. All right. Just to uh, just to clarify for a lot of telev uh, uh, televiewers and our our, mm -hmm. no, no, our folks out there, because uh, there seems to be a confusion. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I got questions on mm -hmm. my Facebook earlier mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, between the difference between a marriage permit, a marriage license, and a marriage certificate. So we maybe would like to, <laughs> like to clarify mm -hmm. that the permit and the license are essentially the same. Yes. Right? That's a, yes. Essentially, it's the same. You need that as mm -hmm. a requirement. Mm -hmm to eventually get married, and when you mm -hmm. get married, that's when you make a declaration, and when you make a declaration, yes. that's when you write it down, that's where you have it on the certificate. So mm -hmm. just to, to clarify that. Right. Uh, uh, uh. I suppose when you say marriage certificate, it's the marriage contract. Yeah, the marriage it? contract, that's the, the marriage contract. Sign, all right? Yes. Now, our next question is from Lani, and she is asking, how much is the total cost? Oh, we're getting to the cost part. For yeah. acquiring all these requirements for a marriage certificate, can I use the same? Certificate or permit, see? There, there yeah, you go. She's for, a, the yeah, for a civil and a church wedding, or should I get a different one for, for either? I guess it's just one marriage it's license. It's just right? one. You mm. need only one. But uh, with respect to how much, mm -mm. I don't have often, I don't have the, the fees, figures yeah. right now, but you know it's very helpful. You go to the website of um, the particular local mm -hmm. government where mm -hmm. you want to get married. Like Manila, for instance, has a website. Or you go to the municipio yeah. and find out because that's usually, yeah. um, there's a menu of fees. Mm -hmm. And one of them is um, right. the fee for um, the marriage license. Now, just to, I think to clarify, the lack of uh, attendance in these uh, in these seminars will will not make your marriage void or voidable. It's mm -hmm, more no. of you not being able to get or secure a marriage license, right? Yes, it will suspend the issuance until after three months. Mm, if three I months. Remember right. correctly, my family code. Yes. And uh, just for uh, for the audience out there, uh, how how long does it take normally? Once you've submitted all the requirements, okay. how how long does it take to to get the? Well, license? there is a posting requirement of 10 days. Mm -hmm. So um, within that period, um, you know, it's, your, your paper will still remain there in the um, municipal, the local civil registrar's office. I suppose 12, 12 days mm -hmm. yeah. if you count um, the administrative um, procedures, procedures that have yeah. to be made, maybe 12 okay. days. You'll get it. But there is a posting requirement of 10 days. There you go. So rule of thumb, if 
you're getting married anytime soon, you better do it right now. Get the license, all right? Work on the license right away. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll take a short break. Legal Help Desk will return after these reminders. Right now. We're still watching Legal Help Desk on the Solar News Channel and we're still joined by Attorney Fina Tatuico, President of the UP Women Lawyers Circle. Ma'am, uh, one of the questions that, are, that uh, seem to abound no, for, for people who are getting married is prenuptial agreements. Mm -hmm. Is this a necessity or can people do away with prenuptial agreements? Well, it is not a requirement, mm -hmm. but more and more uh, people are discovering the practicality yes. of having one, mm -hmm. especially because um, of the uh, property relations governing right. uh, the, the uh, that that govern now with the um, enforcement of the family code. Mm. If I may just give a little background, sure. Absolutely. prior to the family code, that means prior to 1988, when we were still under the civil code, um, the presumption was that the governing property regime between spouses was what was called the conjugal partnership of gains. Right. Meaning to say, when you enter a marriage, um, uh, uh, when you enter marriage and it just so happens that you have property that you had acquired prior to getting married, you attain the exclusivity with respect to those properties that you um, worked hard for or were given to you before you got married. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, with, what becomes joint would be the fruits? What, what would become joint would be all those properties acquired during the marriage, during the marriage. Mm -hmm. and the fruits of your exclusive properties right. were conjugal. So if, you're, if you had owned a, a, pro a piece of property before marriage and, that were, and you were renting this out, the rent during would the marriage to would the go to the, the conjugal partnership. partnership. Now, but the rule now is different, right? The rule now, the is, rule now is different. Um, under the family code, um, the presumption is what is known as absolute community. Mm -hmm. So when you bring into the marriage uh, property, uh, automatically when you get married, your spouse um, owns 50%. Owns 50%. That's the rule. Right? That's the rule now. It's absolute community. Now, there are those who don't mind this at all, mm -hmm. but there are those who um, realize that um, it really is a very sensitive topic that might even affect the relationship of the spouses right. later on mm -hmm. because um, sometimes it may happen that those properties that you have under your name before you get married are actually properties of your parents right exactly or so you co-own with it, your siblings and it could be a sensitive um uh issue it no? could uh, be on, a yeah. marriage dampener right yeah. so I, I guess what our message here is that uh, not only should you be concerned ladies and gentlemen of, uh, of you know your legal capacity whether you're a man or a woman or you know, it, whether you you pass through the the essential and formal requirements no but what's also important to consider are mm -hmm. the property is the property regime mm -hmm. that will be governing your mm -hmm. marriage that's also one thing that you should be really be concerned about no? uh, when right. you when you're planning uh, you know to get married right now uh, let's continue answering some questions ma'am mm -hmm. if you don't mind okay. uh, from our uh, viewers uh, our, our question is uh, the next question is from Irwin I was a witness to a friend's civil wedding and the attorney at the city hall where they held it told my friend that they need to get a third witness because the other witness was the bride's sister can I ask why this is? Or oh, I, I read the, the, that the witnesses should be of legal age and nothing about their relations to the couple. Uh, would you know of any rule, uh, sort of like violating or prohibiting I, I, a I, sister I, or a brother? I, I a can't witness? think of any because the law is quite categorical. It just needs two witnesses. Um, yeah, it just needs yeah. two witnesses who are um, the age of majority. Yeah. So Erwin, that uh, that. Uh, mm -hmm. 
that person was, was wrong, whoever was advising you. you know, mm -hmm. Basically, the, any witness uh, who's above 18 uh, mm -hmm. is, 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 uh, is allowed. Mm -hmm. Now, um, ma'am, I, I would like to ask uh, mm -hmm. just a, a quick one. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people are asking, is, are there exceptions to the rule that you, you require a marriage license before getting married? Are, are there cases where you don't need a marriage license? Yes, um, the family code is quite categorical mm -hmm. also with respect to certain circumstances that don't need a marriage license. Mm -hmm. One of this is a marriage um, performed or entered into at the point of death. Yeah, or Articula in Mortis. Arti Articula Articula Mortis. Mortis. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, that's one. Mm -hmm. And also, there are instances when a party lives um, far, far from, from, from a municipal the, uh, yeah, hall, from or, yeah. the municipal, Wh from which the makes municipal, it impracticable yes, to, to get a permit. To no? get a permit, that's one also. And um, if I'm not mistaken, also uh, re uh, what we call common law relationships. Right. So basically, if you, I, 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 correct me if I'm wrong, if you've uh, been living in, mm -hmm. living and I think in. this is also to discourage uh, live in per se, no? mm -hmm. uh, is that if you've been living in for five years, if you've been cohabiting, mm -hmm. then you, this is one exception where you, you, where don't, you don't need, need the marriage a marriage license. license. All right. So you need, what, what is the proof that you need to show Mm -hmm. that you've cohabited. Uh, this is a written affidavit? Yes, yes. There is a requirement that you should at least um, show proof mm -hmm. by submitting a document attested mm -hmm. to by a person within the vicinity where you both live who know you okay. to, be, to have been living together for a number of um, years. Right. Okay, good. All right. Uh, now, M is asking via Facebook. I just got married last May and my husband is bugging me to change my surname, surname to his, but I want it hyphenated. How do I go about changing my name and what are the steps and requirements for this? So, mm -hmm. You can actually use your um, maiden, maiden name, name yeah. hyphenated with your husband's yeah, fine. Yeah. surname. It's okay. Yeah, you don't need to take on just your husband's family name. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, you're even allowed to still use your um, name. Mm -hmm. um, if you'd like to. Now, what are the steps? I don't recall of any um, particular, particular steps. steps uh, yeah. no? I guess this yeah. will just happen as a matter of course, like if yeah. you're applying for a driver's license and it used to be that it was uh, you, you obtained it when you were single and if you renew it, you're already married, then you just show proof that you are married and that mm. you are going to use this name in your right. driver's license. The same with the other um, IDs yeah. that you have and you just I think, use it. I think use it's more from thing. a practical standpoint. Yes. It's more from a practical yes. standpoint. For example, you're getting a passport, you're mm -hmm. getting your driver's license right. uh, and you're already married. Um, mm -hmm. So sometimes it just causes confusion. Uh, if maybe your passport is still your married, is still your maiden name and then your, your driver's license mm -hmm. is Right. Is your, your is your married name? So I think it's it's a matter of your your choice, but I think for practical purposes, because you're married, and usually in uh, some IDs would require your married name. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's most most practical that you you have your married name, but you can have it hyphenated. That, that yes, should, that should you be can no have problem. It hyphenated. All right. Now we have a question from uh, from Ida via Twitter. What are the reasons for a marriage to be declared void? We were talking about that earlier, some mm -hmm. of the, the grounds. No? Mm -hmm. If the marriage is found void, should they marry again? That's kind of strange. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or do they just need to fix whatever paperwork is needed? I guess what she's saying is that if, mm -hmm. if for example, uh, it's a marriage void ab initio. Let's say they, were, they got married when they were 17. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they know that and they, 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 they realize that, mm -hmm. should they just remarry? Uh, what is the best solution there? Uh, do they have to first have a declaration of nullity and then get married? Let's say they, they still love each other, mm -hmm. but they know that there's a defect in their marriage that, let's say, um, they got married before 18. I or think they the should just remarry when they, they reach remarry. the age of majority. So they can correct it. But they, they, do they have, they don't need to have to go through a kind of a declaration of nullity of the, you know, the previous marriage. Usually you, 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 you go to court for a declaration of nullity of your marriage Article 36, mm -hmm. no? Um, you don't, well, 
there are instances also when you have um, void marriages such as bigamous, polygamous right. mm -hmm. marriages, then mm -hmm. they are, you go to court to have that particular mm -hmm. um, marriage void. Voided, yeah. So, so the, the, the general rule is that mm -hmm. If, if a marriage mm -hmm. is void ab initio from the very beginning. From the very beginning. Then you just have a declaration of nullity. Mm -hmm. And, and I suppose, um, based on the question, if it's bigamous, yeah. you, it, it's, it's totally, you cannot have a relationship with right. that particular person. Yeah. The same with polygamous marriages mm -hmm. and um, all those uh, marriages which are considered void. Mm -hmm. But here's a question that might mm -hmm. be more related to succession rather than, mm -hmm. than uh, the laws on marriage. Mm -hmm. If you have a marriage, let's say void ab initio, they got married, they were 17 mm -hmm. below, or they were mm -hmm. 17 years old, mm -hmm. but they had children. Would those children be legitimate or illegitimate, considering that their marriage was void from the very beginning? Well, they can be legitimated. They can be legitimated. They can be legitimated mm -hmm. if they um, actually um, go through the marriage the ceremony magic. at the time mm -hmm. that um, they uh, they at the time that they get married again. Mm -hmm. But you know, I think that portion is a still, lacuna. Still, it's uh, uh, kind of a gray area. Kind of a gray area because they they would. Uh, would they have uh, would they have rights of legitimate children? That's a question, right? Would right. they have rights as legitimate right. children, mm -hmm. uh, or you know, because legitimate children mm -hmm. get twice as much as illegitimate children, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I guess that's still uh, mm -hmm. there's no Supreme Court case uh, I testing this. Yeah. I don't know of any offhand. Mm -hmm. Offhand, I, I I can't think of any offhand right now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, uh, all right. So uh, anyway, well, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have left. No? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, the time mm -hmm. really flies by so fast. So I'd, I'd like to thank our guest, uh, Attorney Fina Tantuico. We really need uh, uh, two episodes for this uh, oh, when yeah. we talk about marriage. But we'd like to thank you, Attorney thank Fina you. Tantuico of You're the welcome. UP Women's Lawyer Circle. Uh, thank you for coming over, despite the, the inclement weather. I was, and, going, I was doing it for Carrie. And, and next time, next time, here. next time you're here, we will call you again. We, the, the, next time, we hope that Attorney Karen can be here. And I certainly hope Attorney Karen will be here next week. I'm Attorney Rod Nepomuceno. Join us again next Monday as we talk about your legal rights on the issue of traffic violations. Until then, good night and God bless. <laughs>